So Frank Palaya, Frank, you, Frank, thank you. Ciao, Alan. Frank, you and thank you for coming on tonight. Um, we'll be doing some really wonderful things, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. Let me just get this set up right here. Do that, and I think we're all set. Okay. So um, tonight, um, uh, Frank is going to be um, talking about his photography of Rome. Now, when Frank originally sent me his uh, photographs um, seven, many months ago, as it turns out now, I was going to say a couple of months ago, but we've been on now for nine months. Um, one of the things that really, you know, grabbed me were his were your photos of, of Rome, uh, because we've taken a lot of photos of Rome, and I've shown some of them on on the show mm -hmm. over the past few months. But the photos that you have of Rome are really unique and interesting, and I thought we would spend a whole show just talking about some of those. So um, you got something you'd like to say, right? Yeah, quick uh, mention. Um, I'm in a show that opens Friday evening tonight. That I am not there. I'd rather be here with you, Alan. Not nothing against You're the show. You're kidding. But anyway, it's at the Aiken, Aiken rather Aiken Library and Museum in Pauling. And it's a show curated by uh, Bibiana Mateus. And it's uh, about uh, 30 or 40 artists. And the artworks are dispersed throughout the library and the museum. They're not hanging on, there's nothing on the walls at all. Oh. Everything's kind of mixed in. It's, it's kind of like a scavenger hunt almost. Mm. You know, you walk around and discover things in the nooks and crannies. But anyway, that opens tonight, and it's an interesting show. It's up for a month. It's in Pauling. But, uh, What's the name of the place again? It's the Aiken Library and Museum. Okay, so if you're looking for something to do on a unique, weekend, or and unique, unique and yeah. see some... There's quite a few artists listed. Yes, yes. Um, uh, you among them. Too many to mention right now, but... Um, yeah, okay. But yeah, just... Right. Uh, Okay. Interesting show, wanted to mention. So, now, the first thing I would like to show is, uh, uh -huh. now, hmm. Frank, of course, did this mural in, uh, in Poughkeepsie in the Little Italy section. He was commissioned to do this. Um, and, you, want, and you know, I, I, I would like to really focus on this at a future time, but I just thought I'd mention it because we had been there a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. And we thought it was really marvelous, and the ceremony was beautiful. 
Thank you. Yeah, it was a really great event. I, I enjoyed it immensely. Uh, it was a beautiful day. Um, about 150 people came. Uh, numerous politicians, including uh, congresswomen and um, senators. And uh, so I was really uh, delighted and flattered that that many people came out to see my mural. I worked on it for about a month, painted almost every day for a month, mm. and um, did all the background research. Uh, it's a, the title is the Italian Heritage Mural, and it highlights the um, amazing and interesting uh, history of the Italian neighborhood in Poughkeepsie. Um, it's about 150 years old, the neighborhood. And it's the only ethnic group, uh, ethnic uh, neighborhood that's still intact mm -hmm. in, in Poughkeepsie. All the other ones have dispersed. There used to be an Irish neighborhood, a German neighborhood, a Polish neighborhood, right. that kind of thing. But now um, yeah, they're all gone. And mm -hmm. so it's a very charming, a very small but charming uh, neighborhood. And it's uh, well, we didn't get a chance so to really uh, see I'll, the neighborhood, so we're going to probably yeah. come back as as we integrate. Yeah, I think you said you wanted to do a whole show. About I things. would like to do a whole show about. Yeah. Little Italy, mm -hmm. um, and give you a chance to give us a tour of, of, of the you know mm -hmm. different places, and mm -hmm. maybe even have dinner at a, at a place, right. and come back to the mural at that time. We did you know see very little of it because we we went to that place across the street. What was that? Like, kind of like a cafe. Cafe Aurora. Yeah, yeah. Cafe Aurora, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it looked like that has pretty good stuff. There. Oh, very nice place. Very well known. It's been there about eighty years. Really? So, yeah, it's very established. Hmm. And uh, the owner, uh, Lou Stripoli, uh, gave me a beautiful, huge cake for, for 100 people. Uh, excuse me, the, uh, but I have that. Okay. I have, you know, okay. I have this sign here, Little Italy. Yeah, Friends of Little Italy. And I have a very lovely picture oh, of nice. your family. Thank you. That's There's Frank nice. and uh, his wife, Eve. Eve, on the right side of that, mm -hmm. who was on the show. And she did two amazing shows, you know. Ago, that right. was just yeah. amazing. And of course, your daughter, daughter Laura, Lily, right. in the middle. Very so. nice photo, Alan. Very I'll nice photo. Laura to took this. Send that. To I me. will do that. Okay. And this is the uh, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. this is the cake. Oh, you got me cutting. That's I got nice. you cutting. We got you cutting the it's cake. It's the only one of me cutting. Okay, great. Yeah, that's and, Lou uh, on the left there. He's uh, the one who made the cake. Oh. He owns mm -hmm. the Cafe Aurora. Right. And as Dick Crenson um, filming, he. Uh, has done a lot of great films in the area. Yeah, that was a very nice, uh, very nice, event. very nice ceremony. And I must mm -hmm. tell you, the cake was quite good. Yeah, it was a little too good, actually. <laughs> I had two pieces, so yeah. Did you? Well, I, you yeah. know, I tried to. And a lot of paparazzi there in the back. That's kind yes, of, that's there was. Kind of, it, you know, I'll tell you, it was an exciting. It was an exciting event. Yeah, it was great. And it was really fun. And you know, whenever politicians show up. It kind of like adds a little uh, yeah. you know, pizzazz to it. Congresswoman Nan Hayworth even showed up. Right. So uh, I introduced myself to a couple of them yeah. until I found out that we were of different political parties, in which case yeah, I made it myself was, uh, scarce. Yeah, it was mostly Republicans there. Oh, I didn't want you to say that. See, I was trying very hard I'm not sorry. to say that. Well, it's true. I just wanted to make it seem as generic as possible when I said politics. There were some Democrats as well. Anyway. anyway. Okay. This is so. This is the beginning, and this is not a photo. It's not mine. Not not Frank's, but I, you know. And not yours either, right? No, it's from the internet, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's a picture, and you know, it's not totally devoid of people, as you could it's, say. It's a it's, great um, shot. It's a great. It, it's a fabulous shot, taken from the cupola, right, from the top of, of St. Peter's Cathedral, mm -hmm. looking down at the Piazza San Pietro, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it is a spectacular photo, mm -hmm. but I showed the uh, our audience this because this is what St. Peter's Square looks like when it just has a normal amount of people, okay? And, you know, this is the view. Uh, I've never seen this view before, but I've certainly been down on the on ground level when there were this many people. This is what it looks like being on ground level, kind of looking at it. Let me increase this to a size that people could see it because it's a little small there. But this is what it looks like being, um, and, and again, there are very few people in this mm -hmm. photo. And this is the way I kind of sort of remember it in the number of times I've been there. And this is the photo that you <laughs> sent me, which... Yes. So talk well, about this. Okay, that needs a little explaining. What is going well, on Well, I tell you, this is in 2005. 
And uh, my wife and Lily and I were there for about uh, two or three months, I forget. Uh, we were doing, she was doing a um, residency at the American Academy in Rome, which actually is just a little bit up the hill from the uh, Vatican. <clears throat> mm. and just by coincidence, while we were there, the Pope died. And uh, it was Pope John Paul, very popular Pope. And wow, you know, the whole world basically just buried Rome and people in a matter of just a day or two that the population of Rome quadrupled. Wow. And uh, if you think about it, can you picture New York, uh, you know, where the... <laughs> Oh, the sure. population quadrupled. It would be, oh, yeah, but you know, it. it was very orderly. Everybody was so respectful of everybody else. People from probably every single country in the world came, including this is amazing, eighty heads of state. Eighty. Wow. Um, at the time, it was Bush, um, right? Uh, President Bush, uh, you know, Chirac. Uh, Schroeder from Germany, I forget all the leaders, it was several yeah, years yeah. ago, but you name them, you know, Berlusconi, of course, and they were all seated in the front at the other end of the piazza there. Well, let me go back. We to were it. toward the back. Yeah, they were right in front of the uh, St. Peter's was what, about 150 chairs, all prime ministers, presidents, mm. even uh, John Kerry was there, Ted Kennedy. Mm not just uh, presidents and prime ministers. Um, and what exactly and is going anyway, on? Anyway, well, this is the, the funeral. They had oh, the, the funeral. Pope was out there in the middle of the piazza in a wooden casket, mm. plywood, not plywood, pine, pine. Right. And, um, very simple. you know, very, very somber service and ceremony, etc. And they had jumbotron screens all around, you know, with uh, big pictures of, uh, of uh, the dignitaries there speaking and so forth. The, the piazza was packed. There must have been five or six hundred thousand people right there. Mm. And uh, it's funny too because a uh, funny little story. My, my family and I were, were kind of at outside, just outside of the, uh, the colonnade, you know, the colonnade mm -hmm. that comes around. Because it was a little breather of air you know it was really crowded and my wife actually got a little claustrophobic so we went out to, to the back where there was more room and uh from behind me i heard a very familiar voice it was a tv broadcaster from uh, abc news channel 7 uh, from new york mm -hmm. I, I recognized his voice it was joe torres right he's been on the tv for 25 mm -hmm. years very distinctive voice i turned around and he was just finished talking to somebody he was interviewing people He's there, of course, to, to cover the funeral. And I went over to him and I said, uh, hey, are, are you Joe Torres? You know, English, you know, you're in Italy. So whenever you hear English, you you pay attention. Right, right. And he, his his eyes open, he says, yes, who are you and where are you from? And then he started, immediately started interviewing me. So uh, I told him, you know, I'm from Poughkeepsie and New Jersey, actually, Jersey and Poughkeepsie, and he asked me a few questions and then uh, talked to, to Eve. And, um, and wouldn't you know it, <clears throat> we get that evening, we get tons of emails from our friends in the States that they saw us really? on the local wow. news. Because, you know, whenever, whenever news people are outside of the country, they like to talk to Americans to right, get their right. opinions of what's happening there. Really? So, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, they interviewed me. Oh, I know what I did. I said I'm from New Jersey, and Eve said she's from Poughkeepsie. So it sounded like they were interviewing all these different people oh, right. from, <laughs> well, from America, yeah. but it was the same family. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, very interesting. So people for, for weeks and weeks were telling us that they saw us, and they, they had me oh. on two or three times, and they had Eve on two or three times. Anyway, it's a little, little side story. But So uh, what are all these flags exactly? Are, are well, these all know, Italian that, flags? No, 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 no. They're all international all the flags. Yeah, because, mm. you know, like a group of nuns from Guatemala would show up, you know, and so they have their little Guatemalan flag yeah, or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, and it was such a wonderful, uh, I must say, uh, to have that many people just descend on, into a big city that's already crowded 
There was not one incident, there was not one arrest. The, the Roman um, officials handed out free water bottles, free blankets, because this is, I think, in March or April, it was a little mm -hmm. chilly. They gave out blankets and water and, and mm -hmm. food to thousands of people. Where, where, where did everybody charge. stay? It's a mystery to me. I don't know where they stayed. Because it was three or four days uh, yeah. of this event. You think some of them may have just camped out in the piazza? I mean, is that possible? Probably. They, you know, they probably made an exception. I mean, they normally don't like that, but uh, this doesn't happen every day. You know, the Pope doesn't die every right. day. So. Right. Okay, well, that so was, that's, that. yeah. that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I just wanted to show this because this is... Oh, that's not mine, but that's... No, this is not yours. yours. This is by uh, some... Sculptor, I don't know if you ever heard of him, Michelangelo. <laughs> oh, Mickey? Mi Michelangelo. Yeah, this Mickey, is the yeah. famous P.A. Todd that's in St. Peter's. So, yes. You know, that's that. And there's yeah. another shot of it from a slightly right. different angle. That, that's sort of the area we were in. We were in you interview. took some great photos. These are uh, really yeah. great photos. Okay, so... Well, it was know, such a unique uh, experience to have that sure. happen. You know, I just, of course. I could not, you know... You know, I'm trying it. to remove some of these pictures at home couple of days ago because I don't want to show like it but I loved every one of them mm -hmm. so I kept them kept them all in hope you don't mind mm -hmm. okay now I you know so Frank gave me all these pictures and <laughs> told me to kind of arrange it the way he way I wanted to so I put in this one which I love this picture first of all I love this piazza mm -hmm. this is the piazza Navona which mm -hmm. is probably my favorite piazza in Rome yes this is a marvelous place to go it's um, it, it's very. It used to be a stadium or a hippodrome. Right. It used to be a hippodrome mm -hmm. during ancient times, and it's kind of shaped like, you know, in that oval, oval manner yeah, of a hippodrome. Like the Ben Hur. Uh, right. Race. Right. Use that as well. And this is, um, um, you know, there are three famous uh, fountains. The most famous of which is the uh, uh, Fountain of the Four Rivers, which was done by Bernini. But this is, this is the place to go if you want to hang out and have a good time. And this is the place that Laura and I always go to get grab a gelato, mm -hmm. you know, sit at a cafe and have a cappuccino, or just, you know, there's, there's street performers. Right. So it's, how'd you get this photo? This is from, um, oh boy, what's the museum? It's from a museum window, and I can't remember the museum. Oh. In the piazza? Yeah. Oh, Can't help what you. Was that? Maybe it was not a museum, maybe a church. No, I think it was a museum. Anyway, uh, yeah, it was a beautiful vantage point. You know, usually you don't see the piazza like that. You're mm. in it, yes. but you can't really see it. Uh, but this was one of the rare viewpoints that I um, wanted to capture because you can really get a sense of the scale and the activity and the sculptures, the fountains, and then and the architecture that's around it. It just was a nice, nice shot, and it's it's a very entertaining place to go. I mean, yes, you yes. don't, you know, just go there any day, any time. It doesn't matter. There's always uh, artists painting and musicians playing and uh, uh, acrobats and you name it. It's it's like a it's not kind of like a like a circus. It carnival. is, and but it's a very very friendly place. As you meet all kinds of tourists, and um, I have a joke, you know. A lot of Americans are, say uh, they want to go to this, but they don't quite know the name, and they call it Piazza Nirvana. <laughs> it's Nirvana. like Nirvana. Nirvana, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, 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 it's Navona, not Nirvana. Yeah, so, my, my, my friends in Italy are always like, yes. you know, saying uh, people are asking for weird, Americans yeah. ask for weird things. Yes. And there's actually a wonderful uh, cathedral on the left. You don't see it in this shot, mm -hmm. but it's on the left side. It's uh, Santa Agnese. Mm -hmm. It's quite large. It has two big towers. And it's the biggest uh, structure in the piazza. You know, it's funny, but I don't know much about the surrounding <laughs> buildings because every time we've gone here, it hasn't been with the idea in mind of like going to a church or a museum. It's just to have a good time. Yeah, by the way, the Agnese is the Brazilian church. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's one of the okay. So what do I what do I have here? I have this yeah, other one. Yeah, that's a lovely fountain. So um, this is uh, you got you got sorry, some great. I don't know the name of that. That's a but, that's a great. Um, this is not the fountain of the four rivers. No, right? no. That one. This is one of the other ones, yeah. which is not by anyone. Okay, then yeah, yeah. of course you have 
what Italians call the eyesore, Romans call the eyesore, the wedding cake, or the typewriter. The typewriter. <laughs> yes. And, I, you know, Frank, I, I've, I've always liked this building. I, I mean, love it. I love it too. I'm one of the few that do. Uh, first of all, it's probably if well, let's, second. Let's, let's, let's tell people okay. what it is first. Okay. Go ahead. Well, it's uh, La Vittoriana is the official name, which is named after King Vittorio Emanuele, who is one of the uh, um, founders of Italy. Victor Emmanuel for the audience. That right, Victor Emmanuel, Italian. right. And, uh, and this is a, a grand, grand monument to him. Uh, I, I mean, he's sort of like, you could say maybe not quite the George Washington, I would say Garibaldi is more like the George Washington. He was right. maybe more like the um, oh, let's see, not, Jefferson, not Jefferson, but something more like that. He was one of the three uh, who who put Italy together and made it one country. It was Garibaldi, Vittorio Emanuele, and um, and Cavour. Right. And so um, anyway, this is a monument to him. And it's kind of a multifunctional building. First of all, it's enormous. It's actually the second biggest building in Rome after the Vatican. Right. Right off the bat. It's the highest, one of the highest points. Those bronze horses are just phenomenal up there on top. And uh, <clears throat> it's a museum. It's a monument. It's um, it's just a grand building. And you... And, and it's been, it was closed for many years. And then finally, after my, like my 10th visit to Rome, it was finally opened. They opened the, uh, the top colonnade. You can mm. walk through those grand columns, which are really enormous. You don't get a sense of that. You can go inside the, uh, in the building. You can go underneath the building. You can walk behind the, um, the statue, equestrian statue of Vittorio Emanuele. We have different views in the coming middle. up yeah. in a few minutes. I, yeah, I was there. It was one day. It was absolutely a spectacular, beautiful day. Maybe that was the day. I got so many great photographs from that one day, and I think that's maybe one of yeah. them. By the way, it's in a very strategic spot in Rome. It's kind of um, ground zero in a way because it's right next to the to the Piazza Venezia, which is a major, major, major piazza where the traffic goes around and around, and Mussolini gave his famous speeches from the balcony of the Palazzo Venezia, which is right there on the side. You've got the Campidoglio, which is right behind it, or the Capitoline mm -hmm. Museum. You've got the Foto Imperiale, which is um, a major, major uh, thoroughfare on the left that uh, Mussolini built, unfortunately, right over the Roman Forum. Um, and he made it straight and grand and wide so he can have his parades with the soldiers. From the Colosseum to the, the Coliseum, Palazzo right. Venezia and then make his speeches. Right, exactly. But Very he cut grand. right through all those... Yeah, supposedly, oh, you know, he said, don't worry, I uh, took out all the artifacts, but I don't know, he probably uh -huh. didn't. But anyway, but it, it, it's in an amazing part of Rome, which I think is, is like the crossroads of of civilizations. So why do you know, why do native uh, Romans dislike this? You know, I don't really know why. I think maybe it's the scale of it is just huge and it really overpowers yeah, it's an everything. Eyesore. But see, I don't think so. I think it's like a it's like a an exclamation point. You know, it's like a major yeah. landmark that's plopped there. I love it. I love you it. You can too. see it from everywhere. It's too. white, it's gleaming it's just grand it has that old world grandiose scale that not that many buildings in rome have besides i mean there are a lot of great churches and museums and so forth but this one is bigger than all of you them. know and it punctuates the importance of victor emmanuel punctuates, that's the word i was trying punctuates to no, thank you very much yes. because let's face it you know for th thousands well i mean since roman times between the end of the roman the fall of the Roman Empire and 1871, Rome was basically, you know, all these little city-states warring right. against each other and, right. and they all kind of viewed, them, viewed themselves as separate countries. Right. And this person actually was involved, right. one of the people involved in unifying. And actually that's, I'm glad you reminded me of this, it actually also symbolizes the unity of the country, mm -hmm. unification of the right. country. And it's also a war memorial. 
whenever uh, soldiers die in large numbers and uh, Italian soldiers die like in Afghanistan or Iraq or yes. wherever they are, they always have the memorial there, you know. Mm -hmm. So it has uh, many functions, but to me, just the visual scale and grandiosity of it is what I like about and it. And I would be bereft if I didn't say one last thing, which I'm mm -hmm. sure Laura at home is saying, Alan, don't forget to say this, because probably Laura's favorite museum is the Risorgimento Museum, oh, yes. which has some really great exhibitions. We saw right. a Sophia Loren exhibition. We saw an exhibition to Van Gogh. And it's in here. It's in the it's, back. It's you in go, the back. In other right. words, you go sort of in the right. back of it on the mm -hmm. on the as we're looking at it. On the left. It's on the left side, mm -hmm. towards the back, mm -hmm. and they have this really wonderful mm -hmm. museum, which really has exhibitions now. Yeah, this is. A, I tried to get, capture the uh, the way it looks at night. I didn't have a tripod, but I. I it, but it's a great it. shot. A, kind of a time exposure, maybe just I don't know, fifteen twenty seconds. And you get a sense of what it, it is quite beautiful at night also and then when there's uh, national holidays they put candles all around it's really magnificent it, it is. really is it's really a beautiful building and yeah. right and then this is a close-up view uh the side view of the uh, equestrian monument of vittorio manuele and there he is it's the largest by the way it's the largest bronze horse in rome mm -hmm. Is that largest, right? It's the largest bronze sculpture, period, but it's definitely the largest horse. Even larger than the um, Marcus Aurelius? Yeah, it's, oh, much, oh, it's uh -huh. yeah, way bigger. It's probably oh. twice as big wow. as that. Yeah. It doesn't look as big because it's so up, way up high, Yeah, but yeah, it is quite large. Okay, yeah. and, and uh, it's really what else grand. do we have? Yeah. That's oh, now this is from the top near the colonnades. I, I, it has... That's another thing that's wonderful about this is you get the highest vantage point and you're right in the middle of the city so you can really see far, far around. And that sky that day was really spectacular. This is a beautiful see. picture. Can this is a beautiful... Can you screen up a little bit? Alan? Sure, yeah, yes. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, it was one of those magical days, you know, where every picture came out uh, exactly how you wanted it to, to come out. Oh, Yes, and you, you also have the talent. Let's not discount that yeah. as well. Yeah, and then this one, I, I wanted to get the Italian flag in there. A lot of Italian flags on my monument. And uh -huh. they, they just had, they, I, I must say, in a way, it fills me with pride when I'm up there. You know, it's just, I feel like I'm someplace really special. Yes. It just gives me a very, very nice feeling. Not, not a Mussolini kind of feeling, you know. It's no, not that of course kind not. of thing. But just a, just a, a cultural pride. The, and then my yeah. favorite of all, I think, is the next one. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I love this picture. Yeah, that's uh, that's a nice one. Um, again, the light was just perfect. You get us. So get now you're standing it. on the steps on the colonnade, on the top. Uh, right outside the colonnade in the back, and you can see see how big that uh, sculpture yeah, I is. Yeah, see that. Because uh, that's pretty far away, and it still looks quite huge. I mean, that's probably. Uh, I'd say maybe 30 feet high, mm. you know. So this is a, this was a be, great shot. Be, Better. Because it had to be very large because the building is so big. Yeah. It would look so puny if it was anything smaller than that. Yeah. And then we oh, have... Oh, go, go back okay. and tell people, we'll tell people, uh, you see the building, that tower, kind of large square tower on the left, that's the Palazzo Venezia. And uh, right on the uh, right side is where Mussolini gave his. Oh, that's to, okay. So the building. The balcony is right Yeah, let me use my flag, pointer. So this this building. Yes, yeah, the Is the Palazzo Venezia. Venezia. Right. And, and then from the window. Go down. Go down. And the window's right about there. The window's right about there. And There's a balcony. Yes. Is there a balcony a there? A balcony, not, not a very big balcony. And he would come out there right. and do his. His grand speeches. His grand speeches. And of course, the piazza would be full of people, shoulder to shoulder, the whole piazza, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. Right, okay. And, uh, so anyway, Good. I just wanted to mention yes, that. Yes, of course. Because that's such a famous right. um, of course. spot. Okay, and this is... Uh, okay, now this is looking off the other end of the uh, Vittoriano, and I'm looking at the... This is known as the marketplace of the, the Roman uh, Forum. It's, well, Trajan's Forum. Trajan's, yes, Trajan's, Trajan's Forum in the, okay. is in the foreground. Trajan's Market. Market. That's Trajan's really, yeah, Market. Yeah, that's what I meant. 
So uh, that was a very, very busy hub of activity there with uh, merchants and shoppers and so forth. Yeah, that was, a, that was quite magnificent in its day. Mm -hmm. And you also had uh, Trajan's Column. I think you may you have a it's shot of that? It's not quite in not the picture. In, not no, quite in the picture. Bit, I think it's a little bit to the left. Okay, so this is, you know, so from, from, the, from the monument, you get all these great, great mm -hmm. shots. Right, and now this is looking out of the back of the monument, and mm -hmm. there's the Colosseum right there. It's like a big bowl, you know, it's like it's a big bowl. And the Roman bowl. Forum in the fore, foreground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just... This is a wonderful shot. This wonderful is what I shot. mean by the, the location. I, I'm sure that the Italians picked this spot to build this monster, you know, structure because it was in the middle of everything and then it became itself something big by the way i think it was built in 1912. oh really yeah okay but i guess it replaced you know some of the ancient monuments that were not born. the vittoriano no no really that's that's a little bit outside the form huh. yeah because okay. yeah the cap the campidoglio is but there were there. what there were the imperial forum like the you know Julius Caesar's forum and Augustus's forum. I think it ended right at the back of the. Uh, okay. The, the well, we won't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is an even better close-up close shot up. Yeah, you get the, of the uh, Colosseum mm -hmm. from the top. Yeah. And uh, a little, a slight view of the Via dei Forti Imperiali, which was the street yes. that Mussolini had created mm -hmm. to to travel mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Colosseum. And by the way, uh, you know, Eve and I were married in the Capitoline Museum, and we so wanted to be married on June 1st. Oh, why June 1st? We could, just because it was an easy date to remember, okay. you know. June, June bride. Uh, June yeah, bride. June wedding. Yes. Right well, we were, we were there almost a year. We had to come back to the States in July, so we didn't want to be right. married at the very last right, minute. Right. We wanted a little bit of time after right. that. So we won June first, but that was uh, that's the National uh, Independence Day in in Italy, mm. and they have grand uh, parades on the Foro Imperiale. Oh really? Yeah. And so, so while your we while your wedding was going on? No, 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 no. We couldn't get married on oh, June first oh, because oh, it was oh. too disruptive. Oh. They didn't have weddings on that day because the Capitoline's right next to this. Yeah. And and the and the whole area is full of people. You know, and it's very festive, and they have the jets flying over, you know, with the red, white, and green right. uh, smoke, right. and yeah. the uh, soldiers uh, marching down, and the, the carabinieri, and the bressaglieri. The bressaglieri are the, um, like the Italian uh, green berets. Right. And so anyway, it was a very grand parade, and, my, and so we couldn't have this our little silly little wedding in the middle of this thing, you know, no one would. No one would even be able to get there because you could. It was so crowded. So we had to pick June third. Uh, was our uh, wedding day. It's but that was fun. It was still an amazing location. Yeah. You know we've. Uh, yeah. I, I can't help but focus yeah. on that whenever we Laura and I talk about ours because <laughs> we almost got married in Florence. Yes. Yeah, this is a great neighborhood to be married in. I must say. Oh yes. And this yeah, is another so, yeah, shot. Yeah, no, this is a kind of a dramatic. Uh, yeah, this is shot. really beautiful. This is a, I'm inside the colonnade, looking past the columns toward the Piazza Venezia, and then you have these absolutely delicate um, columns with those very delicate bronze angels on top. But they were just so you know you see the bottom you know the bottom where the where the bronze is, is touching the uh, top of the column. Yes, it's such a Thin little, I see you know, that. it's so delicate. I see it's that. It's so delicate, but yeah, and it's there, you know, out in space. It's like it really is flying out there. It just was really nice. Beautiful. And the sky, of course, is stunning. Yeah, the sky, uh, you know, nice dry day. I found out uh, whenever you see a blue sky like that, it means the humidity is very low. Oh, okay. Whenever you see a gray, kind of just a blah gray sky, no clouds, no sun. Right. That means there's a lot of humidity in the air. I learned that at uh, the Grand Canyon because oh, did it you? was like this every day there. Yeah, well, you know, <clears throat> I, I, I've never taken Laura to Arizona and, uh, you know, because mm -hmm. we got this Italy thing. Yeah. It's like a craze. But yeah, this, it's is a craze. A, this is another nice shot with the clouds. She's never been there anyway. Yeah. This is another view. Yeah, that's a, a nice silhouette of uh, Victor Emmanuel there. Right, that's him on the horse. Mm -hmm. 
and then we go from the sublime to the yes this, i'm <laughs> glad you picked this one because, I put that in yeah because this is what uh, happened now? a totally another day of course yes um, and I, I just got onto a bus and uh trying to get out of the rain and i look out the window and i go oh, wow it looks like a impressionistic painting you know and uh took a few shots i got a few nice shots that's one of them Great. this but, is a great yeah. shot of a rainy Mm -hmm. You know, it's not always beautiful sunshine yes. and blue skies. It does and rain. It does rain. While, yes. And this is that's another the one. Same day, yes, so a little different. Same but, day, so same, that's what Rome window. looks like when it's raining. And I, mm -hmm. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Of all the times I've been in Rome, I don't, I don't recall. A, it rained once that yeah. I remember. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't rain a lot. But not a uh, lot. But you know, when it does rain, it really comes down heavy. Yes. You know, most of the time. Yes. We would, you it didn't prevent, it doesn't prevent people from walking around though. No, you don't have those long days of drizzle in Rome. Yeah. It's, it's sunny or rain. Right. There's right. not a lot of in between. Not that London kind of, no. or Amsterdam, or, you no, know. or even Paris. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, this is uh, the this same is little amazing. rainy day, same bus, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe this, probably the same window. Yeah, of course, I'm sitting in the same seat. And I, I just like the way the, 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 the water on the window was kind of distorting things and uh, that beautiful little uh, Ten Pieto there. I believe this um, is the Piazza uh, della uh, uh, Verita, Bo Boca della Verita. Yeah, Be Verita is uh, to the left on across the street. Exactly right. Exactly right. Oh, wait a minute. So, oh, that's it's a, to that's the left a... of the little temple. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... Uh, and that's also uh, across the street from the right. Uh, the, so these are the two the very, very well preserved Roman, Roman little, little, little odd kind of quirky little Roman temples. This one is uh, particularly uh, unique because it has the uh, the round uh, roof. I don't and know the story behind this. Eve <laughs> would would know more. Yeah, I that. know this is. Uh, now that's the same little. Temple. This is the this is the temp the, the same, same temple, temple with yeah. the. Uh, Honestly, what the piazza kind of looks mm -hmm. like, or at least to the slightly. Yeah, original. it's a funny little. It's a very cute little uh, little piazza. It's got these two temples. They're and they're small. So. And it's dedicated to this guy. Yeah. Who is the uh, Boca yeah. della de Verita, Verita means the mouth, mouth of, of truth. truth right. So what happened was, in the in medieval times, when they wanted somebody to know if somebody was lying or not, right. They would say, "Well, stick your hand in there, mm -hmm. and if and if you're lying, when you pull your arm out, your hand will be gone." <laughs> so people said, "Well, I don't want to." You know, people were very superstitious, so they didn't want to get yes. involved in that. Yes. So that would force them to tell the truth. Yes, and if you so saw the movie *Roman Holiday*, you remember that Audrey Hepburn puts yes. her hand in, and Gregory Peck is there, and she gets scared, and yes, that's a really cute. Scene *Roman Holiday* is yes. a great, a great movie. Very great movie. Yes. Okay, so. All right, now this view is from the um, uh, the uh, Janiculo. Sorry, I almost forgot. The Janiculo or Janiculum Hill, where the American Academy in Rome is located, and it's absolutely one of those one of those stupendous uh, uh, vantage points. You can see the entire city of Rome in one view with the beautiful Alban uh, mountains in the back and these beautiful umbrella trees and, uh, and that Roman light. And um, you, can, you can count literally dozens and dozens of famous buildings and churches from one view. I think I have a lighter picture. Yeah, uh, uh, well that one no, is... This, this, this is gonna be that, dark and we Yeah, didn't... that's a darker one. I, I should have a lighter one, but uh, yeah, now th this, this is yeah, this, this is a little series I did. We had an apartment. Then this is the view from our window, which was just really? spectacular. Yes. Wow. And every day I look out the window, and every day, of course, it looked a little different. The clouds, the sun, the blue, the you know, and but this beautiful umbrella tree on the right here, which is typical of a of a Roman tree, and uh, people think they grow like that, but they actually don't. Mm. The um, Italians uh, cut cut the lower branches and then they grow really large and what happens is they make shade because they're like an umbrella they're big on top it's called an umbrella tree in the United States yeah they're, but, they're, but I had a they tree don't like that when like I lived this. in Jersey I they're know trimmed they're trimmed like yeah they're trimmed to kind of to, to grow like to that. Give that view. and I figured out why they trim them well it's two reasons one is because it makes shade number two 
they don't block the view of anything. Mm. See? Now, if that was not trimmed, yeah. all you would see would be this big, round, solid, opaque blob of green leaves, which is nothing wrong with that, but you don't want that in a city. Blocks everything. Right. We wouldn't be able to see that beautiful... Um, well, in New style. Jersey, when we were living in Marlboro, New Jersey, we had a wheat... It was called a weeping cherry. And eventually, oh. the, the all the... You know, as you just described, right. everything was just... So they would... They would trim it so that it just kind of looked like an umbrella. Exactly. Oh, but then, yeah, this is, but these are quite large. These are yeah. 100 feet. Uh, yeah, ours wasn't that. Yeah. Ours wasn't that big. Yeah. Now, here so I was it, playing around with the Photoshop with those little, you know, oh, yeah. romantic corners. But uh, but that's, uh, that's a different day, and that's yeah. a different view of the Vittoriano. You get a sense of the, um, the chariot on, on, the, on the top there. And uh, it just kind of looks like a painting, really, you know, mm -hmm. has that uh, romantic uh, quality. Okay. Okay, now this is not Rome. It's not. No, it's, uh, it's Trieste. You know, I'm looking at this picture and I'm saying, <laughs> is that the, uh, the Via Nazionale? No. Nope. No, is no. it the Villa, Via no. Tritone? No. And I'm going, no. it doesn't look like any of those. So where are we now? Trieste. Trieste. This is downtown. Oh, my Trieste. apologies. <laughs> that's okay. No, no, that's fine because most people never get to see Trieste. It's a okay. kind of a forgotten city, unfortunately, but it's a very interesting city because it's it's part of Italy, but it, over the centuries it's gone back and forth between um, Croatia and Slovenia and Italy. Explain where it's located. So it's so the, it's the in the gets. very far northern eastern uh, edge of Italy uh, north of Venice right and it's the part where it touch actually touches Slovenia and Croatia uh -huh. and the um, because of the different wars and this and that politics the city has gone back and forth right. but it's after World War two it's been Italy since since then Okay. And it's Never uh, been there. just some other little facts about Trieste. It's um, it's a pretty good sized city. It's maybe three four hundred thousand. That's mm -hmm. pretty big, and it's uh, it it's a windy city. And they <laughs> this and this is what I heard before we went there that there are hooks loops on the walls throughout the city. So when the wind gets really fast, you can hold actually on to hold it. on. Is that right? I didn't see any of those, but it is a windy city. Yeah because there are mountains right behind it. The Alps are actually right at the edge yeah. of the Alps, so we get these winds that come down. Um, and so, but different in interesting things about the city is that it's the coffee capital of Italy and Europe. Is that right? All the coffee that comes into Italy comes through Trieste, and mm -hmm. then it gets dispersed through Europe. It's um, the coffee brand that people might know is Ely. Ely Coffee, I L L Y, doesn't sound like an Italian name, but but uh, that's the family mm -hmm. uh, that uh, has the biggest influence on coffee business in Trieste. Well, I'm not going to change the name of the show from uh, no, but it's know, a Frank Bellas for tough but it's, uh, but it's a nice city if you ever get to Trieste. go there. Yeah. Oh yeah, now this is Trieste also. <laughs> it's okay. It's still Italy. It's okay. all right. It's okay. Alan's Italy. Okay, I understand. I understand. <laughs> But this was this was amazing to me because you've got this building right, and it's amazing how half of it is so perfectly clean and just yeah one color, beautiful, pure, and the other side is couldn't be more opposite. Mm. And uh, you know just a just a ton of graffiti and color and texture, which and I like both sides, and yes. I, it's great that they're actually. I love right the picture. To, that I just thought it was Rome. <laughs> yeah, as in, I said. Gee, where in Rome is this? I can't yeah, wait to find well, out. Yeah. I'm well, moving on. You won't see it. And that's also Trieste. Oh, my goodness. I'm saying and, to myself, well, you what, know, what piazza is? Could this know, be the Campo dei Fiori? Well, if you it, notice, hey, Alan, the architecture is slightly different. A little different. different. Yes. A little different. It has uh, more northern. a more Aus Austrian. 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 Vienna looks like this. Yeah, the Habsburgs owned this for many, many, ah. many years. So that's why it has that kind of central European okay, look. Okay, so this is not wrong, but, uh, but I tell you, though, that was a very beautiful piazza right there. It's, it is uh, very beautiful. Right, right on the... Uh, but it's very Vienna-ish. Yeah. Reminds me of Vienna. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, yes. Where that, is this? This is not Rome either, right? No, no, this is Rome. This is the uh, uh, Villa, Villa Borghese Lake. Lake ah, Borghese Lake. I have never seen this. I've been to the oh. Villa Borghese several times. Oh, and the never park. Seen that? No, oh, I've never seen the well, lake. Well, you've got the Villa Borghese, which is like the Roman Central Park. It's the yes. biggest park. Yeah. Oh, in it's Rome. a beautiful park. Absolutely spectacular park. And then this is a beautiful lake in the middle of this beautiful park. Oh. And not only that, it just takes you completely out of your world. You know, when you look at that, I mean, that could be 2,000 years ago. Uh, you know, there's nothing there that tells you it's, you know, 2005. Right. To uh -huh. me, anyway. Um, and it, it's absolutely the most romantic, beautiful little setting. You can rent boats and you can row in the is water. That right? They've got huh. swans, beautiful, huge white swans. There's one in the bottom left. Oh, we have to do this you next time we're in Oh, and it's, there's, there's turtles everywhere crawling around, you know, mm. and that beautiful little temple. Uh, it's just really a beautiful place. And there's place. some wonderful museums in the, in the, in the park oh, yeah. area. There's yeah. the uh, Etruscan Museum. The and Villa Borghese. Of course, the Villa Borghese is yeah. amazing. Uh, Baroque, a lot of Baroque art, Bernini and so Bernini, on. Bernini, if you there's love Bernini, you've got to go to that park, yes. So there are the ducks and wow, swans. Great yeah. shot. Yeah. Well, this is you good. Can't, well, it's hard to take a bad picture. It's such a beautiful setting, you know. It's really lovely. Yeah. There's, an, there's lovely, another great view of it. View, yeah. And this is just enticing me more and more mm -hmm. to come to this spot. Okay. I have no idea where this is. Now, this, this is Rome, but it's a little outside of Rome. It's the uh, Stadio Olimpiano. Oh. And, uh, Olympic Stadium. Olympic Stadium. Um, they used it during the uh, the Rome Olympics in 1960. Mm. Um, I think Mussolini built this stadium, and it's uh, surrounded by these uh, very large uh, marble sculptures of um, athletes and workers uh, doing different things. Yeah, and, th and there's about I'd say 60 or 70 of these go all around mm -hmm. the stadium. I, uh -huh. I had in some other shots. I never, I've never seen that. Okay. Okay, another uh, beautiful part of Rome is the uh, Piazza del Popolo, or the People's Piazza. Uh -huh. And it's uh, one of the more popular piazzas because it, it's in the part of Rome which is the kind of high-end, sophisticated, beautiful, high-end restaurants, Via Condotti, which is like the... Uh, right. You know, the uh, shopping, main shopping street with all... Well, the, the street that comes from this down south uh, is the Via del Corso, I believe, right? Yes, it comes into there. And then also there's the uh, church to the left of this, where the, you're standing here in this view. Right to the left is the um, church of the um, Santa Maria del, del Popolo, 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 right? Popolo, yes, course. that's where the Piazza and gets And in its there name. are two spectacular um, Caravaggio paintings that you can just walk in and see them. They're not you know, behind bars or anything, you can almost, almost touch them, and uh, they're spectacular. And then um, these twin little temples, uh, churches. Yes. I'm sorry, I don't know the names of them. Okay. But um, that's okay. And then there's the um, obelisk there in the middle, mm -hmm. and it's that's an Egyptian mm -hmm. obelisk. One yes. The, the you Romans. know, I, I I take a course at Bard College, uh, and would you know she's doing uh, Roman ur urbanism pointed out that there are more Egyptian obelisks in Rome probably than anywhere <laughs> in the world including in in Egypt yeah I, I wouldn't be surprised they are just about every piazza has one yeah there's a close-up of the yeah. Egyptian obelisk yeah Taken I, back I, I think if you saw the movie um, the recent movie the Woody Allen movie uh, to Rome with love yeah this this view is in the movie with the two tent two churches this is a great view. and right to the left of this is the uh, Villa um, Villa de Medici, which is the French mm. Academy mm -hmm. that uh, Napoleon. There's did. another view of it. Yeah, they do a lot of other. They have uh, different kinds of uh, events, as you can see. Yeah, I can see tents. on the right side. They also have political rallies here. It's a very nice, big, open piazza. I even rode my first Segway in this piazza. They were renting Segways, oh. and so I rode around that whole the obelisk. I went around and around. It looks like a pedestrian a only, though. 
Oh yeah, no, you, you, it's not really for cars. I mean, only emergency vehicles, oh, or if yeah. you're you're driving something like setting up tents and. You're not talking about a Vespa now, are you? No, a Segway. You know the little motorized two wheel thing. Oh, we we saw a few. Yeah, of those. they were renting yes, them there. Yes. It was the first time I had been on, and I went uh -huh. around and around and around that. Uh, yes, we of, saw a few of those around. Okay, this is. Uh, one of my favorite streets in Rome. I think it's one of yours too. Yes, now. it is. It's the uh, Via Giulia, and it goes from the um, from Trastevere, and it goes toward into into the city. Um, across the bridge, across, right? It starts at the bridge at the uh, uh, Ponte Sisto, I think. It's no, called it's, a I small don't know bridge. Which bridge. Anyway, this is roughly the beginning of the street, and it's one of the few streets in Rome. That is straight, as you can see. Yes, it's actually yes. straight. It's wide. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of traffic, really, but uh, and it's a mostly a pedestrian street. And there's lots of really nice galleries and shops and restaurants all up and down. Beautiful street. And it's covered with that ivy, and I love that arch cross. You know, the ivy uh, dripping down, and mm -hmm. almost you can actually almost touch it. Yes, it's beautiful. And um, it's just uh, green, and and it's quiet because there's not a lot of cars. It's just a wonderful street to just stroll and really soak in Rome, you know, just take it all in, you know. It's right. just, just really nice. You could see there are cars on, you know, on both sides, but yeah. But there's no there's car. no activity. You though. see there's no cars right. in the middle. They yes. they park there. They just park and leave their cars. Yeah. Right. That's a close up. That's a that's a this yeah, is a yeah, this is that. a really great view. I love that, yeah. This could be my favorite picture of all of them. Yeah. Three minutes, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> that's that's another close up. That's that's even. They actually great. trim them eventually. Uh, I I was the last time I was there, they were a lot shorter than that. I think they trim them eventually, right. but uh -huh. but they grow back pretty quick. Okay, I want to move. Oh, Look at a, this one. This is yeah, like how'd you get these amazing? Well, that's just the other from the other side. I know, you know but these are so you you know really so such a talented artist. Fascinated with those. Uh, Only a talented and, artist could come up with uh, this. So we're gonna have to draw it to a close okay. with this picture. So we're gonna do this. Take 30 seconds to describe this. Well, this is the Castello. Um, Sant'Angelo. Sant'Angelo, thank you. And uh, it's uh, one of the one of the highlights of Rome, I guess. It used to be a, a fort, really. Yes. Uh, and now it's a museum, and uh, it's just a very large museum. Well, it was originally Hadrian's tomb. Oh, and right. I Hadrian's yeah. tomb in Roman times converted mm -hmm. into a fort during medieval times. Mm -hmm. And this is where the Pope went during the sacks and he found a place to go to that, right, that would be protected. Right, there's a secret underground uh, right. connection from the Vatican, from the Vatican to, the, to the Castel San So, we so we're going to stop okay. right here. Right. And uh, I will say to you, my friend, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It's been really wonderful talking Italy with you, yes. as it always is, and we'll see you in a few weeks. Okay. Okay, so That's thanks great. again. And uh, to the audience, uh, buona notte e buona fortuna, as I always say. Uh, buon lavoro. I like to add that.